we decided let's put a message in the bottle. Why not? This channel that we had to cross to get to the next island, this is the one that was infested with sharks and stingrays. I mean, I say infested, but there were several, you know, <laughs> and that's, that's a little worrisome when you can't touch the bottom and you, you're, you know, you're in their domain. We wrote a note, we dated it, and we signed our names to it, and we rolled it up and we put some cake into the bottle, and we put the cork that came with the wine bottle, just popped it right onto it. And then we got up and we went out to the ocean. I get like five or 10 feet away from this bottle and there's just this like lightning flash moment where I'm like, oh my God, there's paper in there. There's clearly paper in there. <laughs> so. I tossed a bottle into the ocean and then yeah. it traveled around for a few years, a few thousand miles. It washed up on a beach and you found it. These two met in one of the strangest ways imaginable through a message in a bottle. And it's largely thanks to this guy, Clint Buffington, who one might say has a certain knack for finding these bottles on beaches all across the world. You know, I thought that I had maybe found 84 and I uh, opened one recently and it turned out to be a receipt. So I'm gonna say 83. <laughs> I'll tell you some of the stuff that I found on the beach. Yeah, so definitely bottles, obviously, light bulbs, shoes, uh, yeah, of all kinds, sneakers, flip-flops, every other kind of clothing, shirts, uh, socks, refrigerators, microwaves, television, computers. Found a bunch of Blackberry phones. I found cameras washed up, uh, film canisters, uh, cleaning detergent. I mentioned light bulbs, yeah, that's a big one. The fluorescent tubes, those things are terrifying. I mean, there's some places I go, it's just like a carpet of light bulbs and you just have to tiptoe because it's like, you never know you're gonna get a piece of glass through the leg. Aside from the usual pollutants and trash, Clint has found lots and lots of bottles with messages inside. Here's him holding that wine bottle Carol and her husband Ed stuffed with cake and tossed into the sea on their first wedding anniversary. He's also got opinions on which types of bottles are best for protecting messages and which ones look the best. Probably the best, believe it or not, is the most classic, beautiful thing that you think of with the message in a bottle, which is just a wine bottle that has a core in an actual cork. It isn't always clear where the messages come from, and sometimes Clint spends months tracking down the sender. He found Carol and Ed after contacting a local news reporter who wrote a story about the bottle that brought them together. But Clint also has an innate understanding of the ocean. Ed and Carol Myers dropped their bottle from a resort in North Carolina's Outer Banks. Clint found it about a thousand miles away in the Turks and Caicos Islands. This bottle's journey wasn't entirely random there is some science involved. The Nautical Magazine and Naval Chronicle for 1843 has a lot of interesting stuff in it. Stuff like keeping up morale by doling out lots of rum. But you'll also find tables and tables of so-called bottle papers. For centuries, researchers used bottles to study the ocean's currents. They toss a bottle into the sea and then track not only where it ended up, but how it got there. So, for example, in one study, a bottle was dropped at 24 degrees north and 19 degrees west, and it eventually showed up in Cuba. Sailors could use this information to learn about the ocean's various current patterns. Surface currents travel in big gyres. Think of them as these whirling circles. And they carry stuff like trash and messages in bottles around the world. Looking at these current patterns, we know that Carol's bottle, departing from North Carolina, most likely traversed the entire North Atlantic Ocean and made its way down the coast of North Africa before being redirected to the Caribbean where Clint found it. Clint will often use these currents to determine where to look for his treasures. If you're looking for messages and bottles on the Northwest Coast, you're probably gonna find some from uh, like Pacific Island nations or maybe from Japan. Say you're looking for messages and bottles in England, you'll probably find a lot from the States because we've got the, uh, uh, the Gulf Stream that goes right up the East Coast of the States and heads straight over to Europe. So a lot of stuff uh, washes up in Europe. You can even, to a certain degree, predict it. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has a current simulator using data from electronically updated tracking buoys. Drop a pin near Hawaii and you'll find it ends up in Taiwan. And the message in a bottle stories seem to match right up. Clint frequents Turks and Caicos, which is perfectly situated to receive bottles from all over the East Coast and Europe. He's found bottles off the Missouri River and in other odd places, but the Caribbean islands are something of a treasure trove for bottles that travel through the North Atlantic gyre. Clint's real trick, though, isn't finding these bottles, but tracking down the people who send them. You know, if somebody sees 
uh, this bottle on the beach, which is empty, that's obviously trash, right? But then this bottle is not, right? <laughs> In my mind, that's treasure. That's trash. Messages in bottles may not be the best way to exchange information, but they connect people in ways that email never could. Um, we wrote, Ed and Carol Myers celebrated their first wedding anniversary at the Sanderling Inn Resort on February 14, 1999. They were wed on Valentine's Day in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Included in this note is some of our wedding cake. Peace and love to you, we wish you happiness. And then we each signed it. Currents are predictable. Clint can more or less determine where a bottle will end up, but he can't predict who sent it. And that's really the beauty of the message in a bottle. It leaves the connecting part to the ebb and flow of the natural world. There's no algorithm, no social network, just the pulse of the sea and the promise of a mystery. When we found each other, it was also a point in my life where my mother had been diagnosed with cancer and she was, she was gonna quickly die shortly thereafter. And doctors mm -hmm. found for me a serrate, an unruptured brain aneurysm. So it was like in the middle of all that horror and pain and grief was this magical, really mystical experience of you finding this bottle, you know, yeah. that we had forgotten about. And it was a huge turning point in my mm -hmm. life too. I mean, I'd never really thought about it this way, but like finishing college and going out into the world is, you know, it's a time when everybody's trying to figure out who they're going to be and having this as a hobby is, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it really defines who, who I am now. And so, yeah, it's interesting that it came at such a pivotal moment for, mm -hmm. for both of us. Right. It's probably unfair to ask this, but do you have a favorite message in a bottle? Well, I do. <laughs> it's yours, but don't tell don't anybody, tell anybody else. else. We're future bottle <laughs> messages. <laughs> I think Sting is probably the first one who really takes the message in a bottle and blows it up in pop culture. Message in a bottle.